John chapter 3. Good to be here tonight. Good to see you all here. Good to have everybody with us online. Uh, Sweetie Potty had surgery yesterday. Hope I hope this is the last one. I do. And she has been through so much uh, since finding out she had cancer. And... Um, so she had, uh, it, it wasn't a long surgery yesterday. In fact, it went by fairly quickly. Um, <clears throat> but she's in quite a bit of pain and she was resting all day today, sleeping most of the day. And uh, so you just pray for her, pray for uh, Brother Sterling, Sister Gloria, uh, pray for Michael uh, in Kenya. He's kind of stuck over there right now, can't not really anybody leaving the country right now. So pray that he gets to come home soon and in good health. Uh, pray for Perkins and um, Kister, who work in our radio station. In fact, they're, they're pretty much, the, they manage both stations. And uh, boy, they are go-getters. I really appreciate them and appreciate their work for us. So just pray and lift them up, and we'll talk about some other prayer requests here uh, in a little bit. John chapter 3 uh, was looking at these notes again, and, and I, I want to keep going with this. To me, this, this is a neat... Uh, I love studying things that I know are part of an overall pattern in the Bible. When I see a pattern in the Bible, I, I've seen so many of them that I know that it could not be there, number one, by an accident. Number two, it couldn't have been manipulated by man. There's just no way it can be. And um, I remember years ago when I first um, was studying the Bible with some computer software that I had. It was QuickVerse 3.0, was made for Windows 98, if you remember back in those days. And I still have I still have a copy of that program. I found an old hard drive that I had it on the other day, so I still have the program and could run it if I needed to. But uh, it did these accurate counts of words or phrases in the Bible. Now, and I wasn't seeking those out at the onset. I was just looking at different words or phrases in the Bible to see how they were used in the Bible. Well, I kept seeing these numbers come up and I thought, well, that's interesting. And I remember uh, I had two books that I was reading at the time on Bible numbers. One was by uh, E.W. Bullinger, and which was written uh, about a hundred years ago. The other one was written by a, a Baptist evangelist by the name of Ed Velo, and um, his was more based on the King James, so I read it, and I'm looking at their list of the numbers and what they say the numbers meant, and I read their books all the way through, and I said, God, that's great, but I want you to show me from your word. You know, I wasn't trying to disprove these guys, but... You know, anything that man says, you have a right to know whether God says the same thing or not. You have a right to know. And so I wanted to know if God was going to say the same thing about these numbers. So I began to study the numbers uh, in the scriptures. And I, and I remembered that I was looking at one of the two books that I had, their list of numbers... And one of them said the number 50 stood for the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. And I, and it was based upon the, the day of Pentecost. Pentecost means 50. And that's where he got it from. And I would kind of disagree with that now, but that's neither here nor there. And so anyway, what I did was I typed in the phrase Word of God because I thought, I wonder... If, since this Bible's perfect, if it has any sort of numerical patterns in it. And I was looking at that list of numbers, not the number 50, and I thought, well, if the Holy Ghost inspired the Bible and preserved it and translated it, 
then maybe the phrase word of God would be found 50 times in the Bible. So I typed it in, hit enter, and it came up 49. And I went, uh. Well, that blew that idea. So I thought, okay, that was just a guess I made. There's nothing to it. And I can, this goes all the way back to my third grade years when I'm learning my multiplication tables. You know, they say if you, you know, if you have some gaps in your learning, they stay with you the rest of your life. And I remember being sick and out of school for a couple of weeks when they were trying to teach us our times tables, multiplication tables, and the sevens and the eights and the nines, I didn't have all that well memorized. So when I saw the number 49 jump up there, I went, well, that's nothing. And then, I mean, like two and a half, three hours later, it, I went, that's seven times seven. Oh! <gasps> That's actually better than what I thought. Word of God is found 49 times in the Bible, 7 times 7. So at that point, I said, God, this is either just a, a random event and it doesn't mean anything, or you did that deliberately and there's going to be more than just this in your Bible. So, I started looking. And I would think of phrases then that I thought should be related to a certain number. And lo and behold, boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, they started showing up. And I'm just going, wow, this is the coolest thing. Whoa, look at that one. Oh my goodness, look at it. And I was, man, I was in, ex that was exciting days for me. So it didn't take me after that too very much long for me to conclude that not only was my Bible perfect, but it was in order. Everything that God does and says has an order to it. And God doesn't stray from that order. We can know God, can't we? We can know when God's doing something. We can know the work of God because God does the same work from the beginning to the end, he's the same God. Yes, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. And so, I, and I just love studying things like that. So I pointed out last Wednesday night in John chapter 3. Uh, let's pick it up in verse 31. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly. And speaketh of the earth. Well, we know the false prophet is going to rise up out of the earth. The false prophet is always going to speak of earthly things. And there are many false prophets now who are speaking a gospel of earthly things. Like you can be healthy and you can be wealthy. You can have lots of money in the bank and you can have uh, control over the people around you by, you know, saying negative, saying positive things and never saying negative thoughts. And if you just had the Joel Osteen cube, you would have it all, man. And uh, that's the, so that's what that means. And speak of the, the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he has seen and heard, that he testifieth, and no man receiveth his testimony. He that hath received his testimony has set to his seal that God is true. And this is where it gets me, because now that I know that these patterns are in the Bible, God has sealed me with this book. And I'm not changing Bibles. I'm not doing it. I'm not going to some other Bible. I'm not going to get a few years down the road and say, well, you know, they come out with a new version of the NIV and I think it's pretty good. I'm not going to ever do that. I have been sealed, I believe, with the truth of the word of God. And that's what he, that's what he meant. He that hath received his testimony has set to his seal that God is true. For whom he, whom he whom God has sent speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. The Father loveth the Son and hath given. And the phrase we were studying last week was all things. And I was going to maybe move on from that. But I was looking at my notes and I'm going, but I like the things that are here. 
all things into his hand. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Father, we ask your blessings on your teaching tonight, on your word tonight. Not what I say, but what your word says. And Father, help us, dear God, to, to be made alive again from your word. Stir it up in our hearts. Help us to get excited again about the Bible. Help us to get excited about reading it, knowing that there's more things in there that we have yet to discover and find out. Give us that, Father, we ask tonight. Bless your word, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Now, the, uh, the phrase, all things, and I mentioned this last week, 220 times throughout the whole of the Bible. So that's like 22 times 10. And so it's based upon the number 22. And the number 22 is the number for revelation. Go to Genesis 22. Just give you a little, a few little background notes on the number 22 and what it is. You're going to find things revealed associated with the number 22. Genesis 22. Verse 1, it came to pass after those things that uh, God did tempt Abraham, said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And what is this a, what is this a revelation of? God sending his only begotten son as an offering for the, for the sins of mankind. We find in verse 4 that it was done on the third day. And, and literally, historically, Abraham did this two days before Jesus came to the earth. Two, two days or 2,000 years before Jesus came to the earth. It was literally done on the third day after Abraham did this thing. Okay? Um, then he said... Um, all the, what was the name of the place? Does anybody remember? What did they call the, the name of that place? I think it was um, Jehovah Jireh. Do you know what that means? Look in verse 14. In the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. That's revelation. It's in the 22nd chapter of your Bible. Amen. Turn to um, turn to uh, Exodus sixteen. Exodus sixteen. This would be the sixty sixth chapter of the Bible, which is twenty two times three. And in Exodus sixteen, in verse four, God said. Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. And it shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. And what did they call this bread? Manna. For they wist not what it was. Because that's what the word manna means. It, does, it means we don't know what it is. So if you go to the... 66 book of the Bible. What's the name of that book? Revelation. That's where you find out what it means. Amen. He's revealing it to you. In fact, the, the official title is based upon the first verse of the book of Revelation. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ being revealed now instead of hidden. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to shew unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sit and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Turn to Psalm 22. What's in Psalm 22? What's there? What's there, J.R.? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And it's putting, it's revealing to you, it not, and not only the phrase that he said, but if you look down 
uh, verse 8, he trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him, let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. They said that at the cross too. Then if you look down a little bit, uh, you can see in, oh, let's see here, verse 16, they pierced my hands and feet. That's in there. Verse 18, they part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. That's in there. It's a revelation of the cross of Jesus Christ a thousand years before it ever happened. It's a revelation of it. Turn to uh, Joshua chapter 10. Joshua chapter 10. Look at verse 22. The background on this is, is that the, this is the day that Joshua told the sun, don't move, stand still. Told the, the, the moon and the sun, don't move, don't, don't go nowhere, stand still. And the Bible says that by Joshua's commandment, they stood still the, a whole day. It was like a whole extra 24 hours were built into that day. And neither the sun nor the moon moved in their goings forth. And they captured the five kings of the of of that land the king of Jerusalem the king of Jarmuth the king of Lachish and so on and they went and put them in a cave and put stones there to to keep them there but in revelation or excuse me in Joshua chapter 10 verse 22 look at what it says then Joshua said open the mouth of the cave and bring out those five kings uh, unto me out of the cave you have a revelation here but what is it a revelation of I believe, because of the five kings, I believe it's a revelation of what's in the pit in Revelation chapter 9 where you have the fifth trumpet sounding and the locusts come out with crowns on their heads, they're kings, for five months. And they sting men with the sting of death, but they don't die. Okay? It's a revelation. God is showing you something. The word mystery... The word mystery is only found in the New Testament and it's found exactly 22 times. And instead of where he says, this is the mystery and we're not going to tell you the mystery, every time you find the word mystery in the Bible, it says, let me show you what this mystery is. Jesus said, it is given unto you to know the mystery of the kingdom of heaven. Paul said, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. We shall all be changed. Even Babylon, mystery, Babylon the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And the angel told John, Behold, I'll show you the mystery of the woman and the beast that carrieth her. I'll tell you all the mysteries that have been kept secret. So number 22 is the number for revelation. You believe your Bible's in order? Okay. When you, when you learn these things by reading the Bible... You understand how God works and what God will do and what God won't do. It's just out of character for Him. Okay? It's not Him. If, if there's a pre, there's a, someone pretending to be God, there's someone pretending to be Jesus. And when you learn the real Jesus and the real God, when you see the pretender, you're going, you're not, you're not God. You're not the real Jesus. So, He's delivered all things into his hand. And we noted that that is Revelation chapter 5, where God has a book sealed with seven seals. He delivers it to Jesus Christ. Now Jesus has all things. We saw uh, various scriptures that bear that out. Matthew 11, all things are delivered into me of my Father. Luke 10, 22. 22, all things are delivered to me of my Father. John 5.20, the Father loveth the Son and showeth him all things that himself doeth. John 13.3, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands. John 17.7, 7, now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. So all things means what God says it means. It means everything in this Bible. Not like... If you say, if you say, I can do all things through Christ, does that mean that you can shoot yourself like a rocket to the moon and come back? No. 
Because that's not really God's biblical will for you. But I promise you, if it's in God's will, and if it's in God's word, and he wants you to do it, he'll give you the power to do it. Doubt it not. Amen? Amen. He, the Comforter shall teach you all things. John fifteen five. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. See, you see the revelation there? Made known unto you. 220 times revelation. All things that the Father hath are mine. Now, uh, let's see here. Acts chapter 2. Turn there. And I have a, a funny picture up on the screen. I've made mention of the fact that the Bible that we use is the DNA of this church. It's the DNA of those believers who call themselves a part of Bethel, whether they attend here locally or they attend faithfully online. And so... The word that has made me into what I am, that same word makes you into what you are. And even though you might turn out a little different, that's okay. You're supposed to be. Because what if, Melissa, all of your children ended up looking exactly the same? Huh? Yeah, that'd be really messed up, wouldn't it? They say variety is the spice of life. Well, it is. So God then has made them all somewhat different, even though, I mean, I can tell your kids because they look like you and John. They act like you and John. So I can tell them. All right. So in Acts chapter two, verse 44, 44 is a multiple of 22, by the way. The Bible says, and all that believed were together and had all things common. Now, Acts chapter 2 is sort of the beginning of the New Testament, Holy Ghost filled Gentile, mostly Gentile church. Okay, it's the beginning of it. And it's just like it was conceived on Pentecost. The Holy Ghost came in to all of them. Okay? Just like uh, a child is conceived in his mother's womb. And for the first week, the first second week, first three weeks, first four weeks, all of those cells, and those that's pictures of, of them, they all look identical. They all carry the exact same genetic information and there really is no difference between any of them. And that's what you have in the early days of the church. Some have mistaken, you know, the Jesus movement back in the late 60s, early 70s. They were reading things like this in the book of Acts and they felt like that the real church should go back to that. And what that was, they were just being influenced by the hippies around them who were living together in communes and pretending that everything was working well, but it wasn't. It was full of jealousy. It was full of people who would not work to, to benefit, you know, the, the commune or whatever. And it breaks down easily. So during the, early 70s, you had this Jesus movement out in California and you had these Christian communes. And I remember I read uh, Keith Green's, uh, the book that his wife wrote about him and his life. And he said, she said early on in their walk with Christ, they got involved with some of these Christian communes. And he's, and she said they were stunned because there was guys and women walking around naked they were sharing wives and all kinds of stuff like that. And, and they're like, uh, this is not Christianity. So they were taken in by that early on. But in the early church, 
All that believed were together and had all things common. And if you remember, at, at, at that time, people would go out and sell their property and bring the money in. What, that, was there a commandment to do that? No. They were just doing it out of the free love of their heart. They would sell what they had. And they'd bring it in and be a, be a blessing to everybody. And there was no jealousy, nothing. Okay? Acts 4.32, The multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that ought... Uh, that, Neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. And so early on, just like in the embryonic stage, that embryo, that clump of cells, all the cells look alike. They're all nourished this exact same way. They're all received the same benefit from the mother and everything works. But then at some point, one cell starts to become a little different than the others. Well, there's a reason for it. God's got to have a heart. God's going to make a heart in that child. Some of the cells are going to start being different than other of the cells. And in that body, that's necessary. It has to be that way. And I, in, even in my younger years, I thought denominations were evil because they divided up the body of Christ. Then I learned after I grew up a little bit that if we weren't divided up, we'd kill each other. Okay? So let those Baptists be those Baptists and let those people be those kind of people and let us be our kind of people. And that's just how it is. It has to be that way. Why? Because God does a little bit different thing with us here than He does with the other churches that He works for. But don't get it in your mind that those churches have to be doing what we're doing or they're not serving God right. And I know some pastors who think that way. And it's, and it's not right. Okay? But they had all things common. Why? Because they were all from the same DNA. The Word of God. Now, to make an analogy here, and you might know where I'm going, but can a church who never uses the King James, will they ever be like our church in any way, shape, or form? No. It is a different seed. And if it's a different seed, it is a different seed creature all together it's not ever going to be the same thing never we passed lisa and i yesterday when i was taking her up i don't remember if i was taking her to her surgery or her way back from her surgery it was, it was a way back because it was just before you get to Manchester. And um, United Church of Christ and their sign said something about uh, be nice to all mankind or love all mankind or something like that. Quran. They quoted from the Quran on a Christian church board in front of their church. United Churches of Christ. Well, they're liberal anyway. And I just, I'm going, I can't, I can't believe I'm seeing that, but I, I know how far and how bad things have gotten. That's a different seed. We're not brethren. We don't have the same father, apparently, because the father that they serve apparently never had a son named Jesus. Because that's right, Steve, they are deceived. Allah, Allah has no son. Now, Romans chapter 8, turn there. Verse 28. And we know that all things, all things, 
work together for good to them that love God. Now, think of this in the context of your Bible. Think that all things references the Bible, the book of all things. And when you read the Bible from the beginning to the end, by the time you get to the end, don't you see that all things did work together for good? Even all that bad stuff in there, even all that rotten stuff, even though in Jesus' own family there was murderers, adulterers, whoremongers, incest, there, I mean, there was everything, every sin under the sun in Jesus' own family. And he went and died for every one of them on the cross. So that all things would work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. That he might be the firstborn. Of my, remember that DNA thing? If it's if you've got your daddy's DNA, then you're going to look like your daddy. Amen. So he said, verse 30, Moreover, whom he uh, did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. And all of those are past tense. If you truly are saved, he's already justified you. He's already glorified you. He's already sanctified you. He's already called you. Verse 31. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us? What's the next two words? All things. Amen. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. The accuser of the brethren stands day and night accusing you before God of the things that you did throughout your day to day. But God says, who can lay anything to the charge of God's elect? I've already, devil, excuse me, I've already justified them. But, but Lord, they did that today. Yeah, I know. And God could say like devil, you ought to see what they're going to do tomorrow. <laughs> but I love them. And I've justified them already in my sight. And I'm going to freely give them all things. Including, devil, all the stuff that you want. I'm not going to let you have it. I'm going to give it to those people that you hate. And I'm going to let them have it. Whew. Hey, thank you very much for that amen up there. Romans 11, 36, For of him and through him and to him are all things. To whom be glory forever. Now read that verse again. For of him are all things. Through him are all things. And to him are all things. That means anything that you did today that was good. That was a blessing to somebody. A blessing to the Lord's kingdom. You did that. It came from God. It came through God and it went to God. It was all about God getting the credit. If you help people and, and try to be a good person to your neighbors or your family members, and if you're doing that just to get a pat on the back, from them or an okie dokie from them or some sort of payment from them let me tell you what you're doing you're robbing yourself of an everlasting blessing that will come to you even if no earthly reward comes to you or comes your way well I did this for God and nobody nobody knew it nobody nobody thanked me nobody praised me that and believe me, buddy, I got that in me deep. That runs in me deep. And I got to repent of it a lot. 
God's going to give the rewards. And I probably, in fact, I know I'm better off waiting on God's rewards than I am trying to get them while I'm down here. Because if I get them while I'm down here, I'm just going to blow them. Amen. First Corinthians 2. Look at there. First Corinthians 2. Some people kind of irritate me a little bit because there are so many different views. And I, and I released a video this week that I've already been called a liar on it. I read some of the YouTube comments and I've got people calling me a liar, barefaced liar. That wasn't you, was it, Steve? Oh, yeah. I yeah. So anyway, Steve hates my guts. But anyway... But I've already got people calling me a liar over it and stuff like that. And, and, and I'm just going. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't listen. If I worried about what other people thought, I would have never made that video. Okay. Well, everything has a time. Okay. But, but the thing is, okay, is that. My challenge was, if you think I'm wrong about it, then read me three verses that shows that I'm wrong about it. And I already know there's not. But anyway, um, all that's to the glory of God. Huh? I'm going to try to. I'm, and again, again, I am, I am not changing Bibles, Ever. I'm not, I'm not backing down. I ain't backing down from you either. So I don't know. I love you, Steve. First Corinthians chapter two. But if people don't want to get into prophecy study, some churches won't even touch it because they say, well, we can't know anything. What does this say? First Corinthians two, verse nine. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear hath heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared unto them that love them. And they stop right there and they say, see, we can never know what God's going to do. But he says, but God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For as the spirit searcheth what? And what is he searching? All things. All things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. So if you don't have the spirit of God, then no, you won't know anything out of this book. But if you do have the spirit of God, he told us as part of this all things package that he will show you all things. So he says, verse 12, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us. And that freely given to us thing is the verse that God used to deal with me about selling my videos, Steve. Mike, quit selling the tapes. Stop selling them. Give them away. So Lisa and I, we are, we, if I'm going to, I'm going to, um, send off to the conference. We're thinking about going to Las Vegas to the mutual UFO network convention and put a, um, a, a display there and give out our DVDs on UFOs and crypto creatures and all that. Cause they'll, they'll lead them up there. They will absolutely eat them up there. And the fact that we're giving them away will let them know that, hey, we're not there to take your money. We're not there. To do we're here to help you, show you the truth. You believe in UFOs. That's fine. Here, here's what the Bible says they really are. Now, quit. Don't worship them. Don't beg them to come down from heaven either. Amen. Amen. But anyway, so um, that but he's freely given us all things. So I give freely all things. And he said that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Verse 13, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things over here with spiritual things over here. Not out of commentaries and anything else. Um, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. 
But he that is spiritual judgeth what? All things. That yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? That he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. And we have the mind of Christ right here. Everything. 1 Corinthians 15, he must reign until he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death, for he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. In other words, he's not going to have, he's not part of the all things that are underneath God. He's above it all. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all and in all. I'm trying to move along. Second Corinthians 5, Therefore, if any man be in, in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Let, listen, saints, let God make all your television shows new. All your music that you listen to new. All the books you read new. All the news you feed from new. Your, your political party new. Let God make everything in your life, all things new. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Second Corinthians 6.10 As sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing yet possessing what? All things. For as Galatians 3 For as many as are the works of the law and are under the curse, it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in... All things which are written in the book of the law to deceive. That's where he's telling you that it's in the Bible. All things in the Bible. And if you don't, and if, listen, if you're going to say, well, we keep the law for our salvation, you've got to keep all of it. All things. Ephesians 1.22 has put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the Church, Colossians 1. I, is my, am I done? No, I got a ton more, but I'm going to quit. Colossians 1 16, for by him were all things created. That means every star, every sun, every moon, every planet, and all them creatures that are out there. All things were created. What about evil things? Did he create evil things? He said, Yes, I create evil. Isaiah. Uh, they, that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, for the, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, we know what they are. All things were created by Him and for Him, and He is before all things, and by Him all things consist. And He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things He might have the preeminence. That means He's, in, he's before everything. For it pleased the Father that in Him should all fullness dwell, and having made peace through the blood of His cross, by Him to reconcile all things to Himself. By Him I say, whether they be things in heaven, or things in earth, or things in heaven. In other words, all things belong to Jesus Christ. And He's going to share them with us. All things. Woo! Amen.